Hello, friends. Oh, what an exciting day today. Because today is today. It's not yesterday. It's not tomorrow. It's today. It's right now. And what a joy it is to be here right now with you. Oh, I'm so happy to be here. Well, my friends, I hope you had a lovely week. Um, and I'm excited to share with you a story today. This story is fun because it talks about our year and all the days in our year that we celebrate. I won't get too much into it right now because I'm pretty excited. So, let's get into it with a song. So this is a song that I wrote for y'all about our church year. And it goes like this. <laughs> La 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 la. <clears throat> Ready. The days are getting shorter. The light is gone too soon. Looking at the sunset And it's four in the afternoon and Instead of getting sad here I'm smiling knowing what's in store Cause Advent's almost starting I know this from the years before Because our time, time, time It's the circle of the church year because our time, time, time comes back around. So never fear, so never fear. Now there's a time for getting ready, coming close to the mystery. And there's a time for growing, time for you and there's time for me. There's times for celebration, like Easter and Pentecost. And with Christmas round the corner, I know my heart is never lost. Because our time, 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 it's the circle of the church here. Because our time, 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 comes back around, so never fear. Because our time, 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 it's the circle of the church year. Because our time, 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 comes back around. So never fear, so never fear. All right, friends, that was called the circle of the church year. It's a fun little ditty, just so we can, you know, sing about some time. All right. Well, Miss Gabriella has a very exciting craft for you today. Um, super excited for you to do it. And after you're done with it, then I want you to show me it when we get back to the story, okay? All right. I'll see you in a second. Bye. time with Miss Gabriella and today I have a special craft prepared for us unlike anything we have done before the only thing is that it will require a little bit extra patience from your part let's start so we start by separating the groups of white beads and green beads our total number of white beads is 19 beads and for the beads of um, the green beads is 33 total with one long piece of white yarn which we will use to string our beads. We will start by counting 23 green beads. 
we're going to start adding the 23 green beads first. Remember, you can always pause, take your time, and enjoy yourself. Sometimes if, the, if a bead gets stuck, you can use a pencil or you can simply twist the yarn so that it will fit through the hole easier. Now that we have our 23 green beads shrinked, we are going to use count six white paper beads and string them. What I do is twist the yarn as I'm entering the paper bead hole. You see? One, two, three, four, five, and six. Six white beads. We're going to string nine green beads. Now that we are done stringing the nine green paper beads, we are going to string the rest of our white paper beads. Now it's time to tie a knot. We take the two ends and just make sure that you can stretch it, that the paper beads are not too tight with each other, that you have some space. So I will say tie in a couple of times. So I have added a background so it will make it easier for us to see. Now lay down your necklace and we're going to start decorating certain beads. So we're going to start with Advent, which comes very, very soon. So we're going to grab our purple, our color purple, smelly marker, and uh, if you don't mind, I'm smelling it, love the grape. And we're going to take four of these beads, one, two, three, four. And you can do any marks that it will help you know that these are the purple beads that represent Advent. Now, for these beads, I like adding parallel lines that are close to each other. Just because it makes it easier to draw this way. I am adding parallel lines, parallel purple lines. If you like to paint the whole, the color the whole bead, that's absolutely fine. So we're coloring four with purple. Okay, and one more. So Jeremy is going to add more details to the story that this necklace is going to make so much sense to you. 
So yeah, these four beats represent the four weeks of Advent. Okay, and then next we have two beats before going into our green beads, and we're gonna grab our yellow smelling marker. And if you don't mind, I'm gonna smell it. Oh, I love the banana smell, and we're going to mark. Um, I'm gonna draw a yellow star after the four purple beads. A yellow star here in the front and then turn it around a little bit and another star and guess what this represents Christmas and then there's another white bead and we're gonna leave it alone okay now after Christmas we have nine green beads and after the nine green beads we have another set of white beads that we will decorate we're gonna gather six we're gonna color six beads with our purple marker okay ah the smell of grape so i'm gonna do the same i am going to color parallel lines on each bead and I'm so excited this lesson is wonderful knowledge and you can share it with your family with your friends and test them on their knowledge of what these beads and these seasons represent okay so so far we have done three and now three more colored our six uh, purple beads we're gonna color the next bead with a cross and you can use any color I'm gonna be choosing pink and blue together so what we're gonna do is a cross okay in the front and then this one turn around a little bit and do another cross just decorating it with some blue dots after our six beads six purple beads now we are decorating our the beginning of Easter okay so this is Easter and I'm just adding some blue dots to a pink cross in the front and then I turn it around a little bit and I add another cross to the bead. This is Easter, the Easter bead, right? And then we count one, two, three, four, five, and then the sixth bead, we're going to color it red and it will symbolize Pentecost. cover the entire bead. Thank you so much for joining me in this wonderful craft called the circle of the church year in which we learn about the different seasons that we go through together as a church now you can take on this wonderful knowledge and share with your family and your friends hello friends welcome back all right so let me see your necklace Ooh, ooh, those are good I love all those beads on there. 
This is so exciting. Oh boy, you guys are so good at crafts. I'm so jealous. I cannot wait to do crafts with you again sometime soon in the same room. So, let's tell a story. Now, our story today is about time. Time, time, there's all kinds of time. There's a time to get up in the morning. There's a time to go to bed. There's a time to go to school and a time to come home. There's a time to work, there's time to play. There's a time to get on Zoom and say hi to some friends in a different part of the city or the country, but what, what is time? Now, some people say that time is in a line, but I wonder what, what would that look like? Wait, wait a minute. What is this? Oh, look, it's time, time in a line. Look, now here's the beginning of it. It's the newest part, it's just being born, right? Hmm, now look, it's getting older. That part that was new is now old. Now I wonder how long this goes on. Does it go on forever? Does it have an ending? Ooh, look, there's the ending. So this is the beginning that was new at the beginning, but now it's old and the ending part is new now. So we have a beginning that's like an ending and an ending that's like a beginning. Oh, time can be kind of confusing. But you know what the church did? They took the ending that was like a beginning and the beginning that was like an ending and they tied them up together so that we would know that every ending has a beginning and every beginning has an ending. Just like that. Now, there are three great times. There's Christmas, there's Easter, and there's Pentecost. Now, each one of these is a great mystery. Some people miss these mysteries. They walk right through them and they don't even know they're there. Now, we have to get ready to come so close to them every year. And there are times for getting ready. And the times for getting ready to come close to the mystery of Christmas is called Advent. The time for getting ready to come close to the mystery of Easter is called Lent. Now look, here are all of the times spread out, right? So these green areas are times for getting ready. Or sorry, these are, these are growing times. These purple times are times for getting ready. And then here are our mysteries. Now. So, this is the time for getting ready for Easter. And this is Advent, the time for getting ready for Christmas. Now, the one for Easter is bigger than the one for Christmas. Hmm, I wonder why. Now, of course, Christmas is so wonderful a mystery. We don't wanna celebrate it on one day, but rather we keep celebrating it for 12 days, right up until Epiphany. Now this means that it has two Sundays. So this has two Sundays. We're gonna put it right there. Perfect. Now Easter's also wonderful, and you can't keep it on one Sunday. It overflows for six more Sundays, and it makes a whole season. The season of Easter is a time for getting ready to come close to the mystery of Pentecost. So let's put Easter right here. So we have our two mysteries. Now the church year begins with the season of Advent. Now sometimes the color for getting ready for Christmas is purple. Now that's a serious color, the color of kings. Sometimes the color is blue because that's the color for Mother Mary and without her, there'd be no baby Jesus. But we'll put Advent right there. Wait, I think I messed it up. Advent should go here. That's Christmas and that's Advent. Now that feels right. Sometimes time can be confusing. Now the time for getting ready for Easter is also purple. Purple, like this, is usually the color of kings and Jesus was a king, but not the kind of king that people thought he was coming. Now there are six weeks of getting ready for Easter and this is called the season of Lent. It's even bigger than the season for Advent. So, Easter is so great a mystery that you can't keep it on one Sunday, so it's got six different Sundays over here. Now, during that time, people met Jesus in a new way. He died on a cross, 
and that was really sad. But then they kept meeting him. Uh, somehow Jesus was still with them and he's still with us. Then something wonderful happened. The 12 disciples went outside of Jerusalem with Jesus and they saw him go up. A few days later, the Holy Spirit came down and the church was born. The disciples glowed with the power of the Holy Spirit and became apostles. Their tongues were like fire when they spoke. They were more alive than they ever had been before and that's why the color of Pentecost right here is red like fire. So let's put Pentecost right there. So we've got Advent and Christmas, Lent and Easter. Now. We got these green sections. So now we're gonna put in the great green growing Sundays between Christmas and the beginning of Lent. Now, the most you can ever have here is nine. So this is nine growing weeks right here. Perfect. Look at that, we're almost a circle. Now, do you know what the Sundays after Pentecost are called? Sundays after Pentecost, <laughs> pretty original, right? So this time right here, these great green growing Sundays, this is the time when school is out. Summer comes, the days get longer, it gets warmer, and you can play in the park or go swimming. Sometimes people go on vacations. And then after that, summer comes to an end, you go to school, you get a new teacher sometimes, you move to a new grade, and then the days start to get shorter, and school goes on, and you make new friends and learn new things, and the days get really short, kind of like they are right now, and you look out the window at 8 p.m. thinking how dark it is, only to realize it's actually 4.30, and you gotta do some soul searching. But that's okay, because it's right about the time when the light is coming to an end, that we have Advent. And the year ends, and it also begins again. So, here are the three great times. Christmas, Easter, and Pentecost. Here are the times for getting red. Advent, that's four weeks. And then Lent, that's six weeks. Because Easter, you gotta keep going for six weeks after that just one Sunday, because it's a season of Easter. And here are the great green growing Sundays of the year. Right here. It's all here. Everything we need. For every beginning, there's an ending. And for every ending, there's a beginning. It goes on and on and on forever and ever. Now I wonder, which of these colors do you like best? I wonder how the colors make you feel. I wonder which color is the most important. I wonder if you've ever seen these colors in the church. Hmm. I wonder why the church tells time with colors. Hmm. Well, my friends, what a delightful thing to share with you today, the seasons of the church calendar. Now, I think I'll wear this, since I don't have one of your cool necklaces, I think I'm gonna wear this as a necklace, so that we're matching. Let me see your necklaces. Yeah! Necklace buddies. Cool. Oh, look at that. The church calendar. Advent, which is where we're about to be really soon. Christmas, which I love Christmas. Epiphany, Lent, Easter, Pentecost, and all the great green growing Sundays of summer. Oh. And then we start all over again. What a delight to share this story with you, friends. Now, I want you to know that you are deeply, deeply loved. I'm sending you virtual hugs. I'm so looking forward to getting to see you again and teaching lessons in person. But until then, we'll see you soon. Bye.